Okay, so I downloaded my animations. Now I have Unity here. I'm going to import them. To do that, you start by just selecting what you downloaded, throw them into assets, wait for it to go through the import steps. And as you do it, you'll notice that here's one of them right here, Malcolm Walking. If I, uh, in the assets, click this little arrow to the right of him, well, I have to wait for it to import. It will kind of spill open and you'll see all the different uh, elements of that particular animation. The animated character, rather. So, as you can see here, I click the arrow and I see there's the body, the bottoms, default, eyes, hair, etc. And then, notably here, this thing looks like a video playing. That is the an animation of walking. So if you look over here on the right, you'll see that it has that. It shows you exactly what that is. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, import one of my animations in here. I just do that by taking the FBX, drag it into assets, and then very importantly, wait for it to the import. But then it's going to, because of a slight incompatibility in mix and low, it, well, it usually will ask you if you want to then change the uh, shaders, and you want to say yes for that so that it updates them. And what it's doing is updating basically all of the uh, PNG image files that go around. The, uh, the model. So th Okay, so then you have your model in here and you just drag it in. And the first thing you'll notice is that it looks sort of like a zombie, which is sort of a problem. It turns out what's happening is, and it didn't used to work this way, um, it's kind of gross. You can basically see through this model's skin. So what you want to do is go, is uh, click on the model and then notice over here in the hierarchy, you see all the different parts of that uh, model, just like we talked about before. And if you click on body, and you'll see the inspector updates over here, there's something here called a shader, and it says shader standard. If it doesn't say standard, it'll say one of these other things, change that to standard, and then open this up, and you'll see that it says rendering mode transparent. Well, now it makes sense, its skin is transparent. So I'm gonna change that to opaque. And now we have a model. Um, so you can play around with these different um, options for each of the parts of the uh, the model. So here, if I open up the shader, I see that uh, the the bottoms are transparent. Um, doesn't seem to be creating a huge problem, but I do see some transparency. Maybe it's on his uh, clothing. So if I basically just go through here and change everything to opaque. That's already opaque. Eyes are opaque. Is his hair opaque? Ah, his hair is transparent. So we'll change that to opaque. Hat is transparent. So change that to opaque. I don't know. Maybe your models are in some future time when transparent hats are the cool thing. You want it to be transparent. You can kind of uh, get a sense of the different ways that you can customize the avatar and configure it. Here we go. This is his uh, his shirt. And now the model looks a little bit more normal. But notice it's kind of shady. So there's some other options. I'm sorry, sort of shiny. So other options here. I can um, select his, uh, let's see, the tops, which is kind of shiny. And you could also, um, let's see here. Smoothness, you can um, ratchet that down to make it a little bit more rough. And so now you can see it's not shiny. So we can do that to his hat, too. Hats. And bring the smoothness down. Now his uh, hat's no longer shiny, but his skin is a little bit shiny, maybe too shiny. So I could go back to here, choose uh, body. And then maybe move the smoothness down a little bit, right? Because like if it's really shiny, just to show you, it looks like he had like just got out of I don't know the gym or something, <laughs> a little bit too much. He's glistening. Um, so I gotta go back and then maybe make it around right there. And now our model's starting to look a little bit more realistic. 
All right, the last step is how to make this character um, trigger the idle animation just right, uh, right as he's standing there. So we're not going to be using Playmaker with these animations because it's not compatible, but we can at least have characters that we either download or we create with views, which I'll show in a second, to um, kind of you know, stand around and not just look like, uh, like statues. They could have, a, you know, in this case, a basic, um, like an idle animation. So right now he just looks like a statue. So let's make him look less like a statue. So I'm going to um, go back into the scene uh, view and first you want to change the um, uh, the animation type to legacy in this case. Uh, so I'm selecting him. I then click on model and then rig, and I change that to legacy and apply. If I then go back here, I'll see that there's idle animation. Play automatically is selected now when I go up to him. Notice he looks like he's a little bit more alive. See the, oh, but it stopped. So then you have to also loop the animation. Uh, so for that, you uh, click on the model, you say select, and then instead of rig, you go to animations, and you want to turn looping on. So for that, there's the wrap mode. You change wrap to loop. And then at the very bottom of this screen, there's also another thing that says wrap mode loop. So it's looping at the beginning and at the end. And then I click apply. And now when I then hit play, that animation will just keep looping. So what you could do with this is then, using something like Playmaker, you could then while you're not triggering animations, as you walk up to people, they could then start talking to you. So you could trigger a sound. Uh, you could trigger something else that happens. Maybe they say something to you to do something. You look to the right, and then you uh, push a door open or something like that. Um, there is a way to make uh, to to uh, to string together a bunch of ana uh, animations with interactivity. It doesn't work with Playmaker. It works with something called the Animator, which is a lot more complex. There's a tutorial that uh, Samantha put up on the site about that if you are interested in trying it out. But this is all you need to do for, for this assignment is um, go find a character and then uh, find an animation, pull it into your uh, Unity project, de-zombify it by changing the transparencies to be opaque, and then make sure there's a, a, a looping animation when you uh, open your Unity scene. All right, this last uh, step actually is for extra credit uh, because you cannot do this on uh, the, uh, the lab computers. You pretty much have to use your own computer. Um, but if you're interested in trying it, it could be kind of fun. Um, so one of the really cool uh, products up on Mixamo is called Fuse. So if you go to the Product tab and then you click uh, uh, Adobe Fuse CC Preview, you download that and install it, you're going to get... Um, an app that looks like this. And it's kind of like making Mies on the Wii, if you remember doing that. So you kind of start off with uh, basically a certain head. So I'm going to do like a fit male head. And you eventually see him. OK, so there's a, a kind of a typical head. Um, you can then uh, basically kind of pinch and grab to uh, you know make things just make certain body features a certain way. You can, you can give him more of a chin. Maybe he has bigger lips, They're kind of wider. You can you know, change the shape of his nose. Uh, so it's, it's pretty intuitive um, to even make him give him a Pinocchio nose if you wanted, I think. Um, let me just go ahead and start with the fit, fit, character, fit body parts. This might feel a little awkward at times, I'm just going to warn you. Oop. Oh my gosh, here we go. My mouse isn't working. Okay, so now we got that, and then give him some legs. Fortunately, he's kind of like a Ken doll. Okay, um, and then of course, you know, this is like an ideal human, right? But nobody's ideal, so you can give him a little bit of a gut. <laughs> Uh, you may not want to do this in like a, a Starbucks. People might look at you funny. Just going to warn you.
just sort of like pinch and grab and, and do stuff like that. Um, okay, so then we go to uh, the customize options. And here you can kind of, it's nice, you can um, just move these sliders around. Give them slightly short hands. In terms of the space, this could be kind of fun. You can um, change the default expression. So you could be a little angry. You can look kind of goofy, awkward. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit cocky. Uh, there's some goofiness, cocky goofiness. Maybe he's a little cross-eyed. <laughs> so you can have fun with it and just kind of a really interesting thing to do for the journalists in the room is to take a look at, at somebody um, from a story that you're trying to tell and then recreate that person, the real person, which I've done a few times. And it's a lot easier than you would think. It just kind of takes some time. All right. Then, of course, we can put some clothing on them. They only have so many clothing options. Um, not totally sure how you would uh, go about... Um, putting custom clothing on. I don't know if that's even possible, but uh, if somebody can figure that out, that would be a great thing to post on the blog, and you get extra credit for that. Let's give him some shoes, unless we wanted him to be barefoot. You can do some gender bending in here, too, if you want. It could be kind of amusing. All right, so now we've got kind of a typical dude here, and... Uh, Let's give him a beard, though, so we can also do stuff like that. Um, his hair, we can customize his hair. So that looks like a good character. So when you're done and you click Animate, uh, you then log in with your Adobe ID, and it's going to upload that entire thing into the Adobe Cloud. And after the upload, then you'll see it up in your Mixamo. Okay, so here um, it's it automatically opens up the Mixamo uh, website, and it's doing what's called auto rigging. So it's basically building kind of the skeleton and all the different joints and things like that that then the animations get applied to. So you have to give it a few minutes to uh, complete the auto rigging, and when it's done, it says in about half a minute, so it looks like it's done now. Then it starts to uh, load up your uh, character, and then you can kind of look at them in different from different uh, perspectives. Boy, his hair is kind of weird. I don't know if I would have chosen that again. <laughs> um, and then uh, I would just kind of keep the defaults and then say finish. Um, and now you can then go to animate it. So you click animate. And then it's just like every other type of uh, animation. We, or every character, we can go through and, and uh, find different animations that we, we want. So we can see they have some default ones here. So these are the ones that I've used before. Um, here's uh, <laughs> Thriller Part 3. <laughs> and uh, they've got a whole bunch of different ones. YMCA Dance. Why not? Let's do that one. So let's uh, add that to the pack, add to my assets, go to the assets, uh, it says it is processing, so we should, we should wait for it to finish. 